Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today on Facebook. And for those that will join us later on YouTube, we are grateful to have you with us today. Real quickly, let me go over some announcements. Uh, uh, first of all, again, the Our Daily Breads. They are in a container on the front porch. If you happen to be in the area or are coming by the church and you want an Our Daily Bread, be sure and stop and get one. You just come up the steps of the front porch, and it is on the left. Uh, in a box there, go ahead and get one or get two or three for if you know someone that would like to have one. Uh, also, if you're not going to be in this area, once again, there's an envelope if you have an old book that you can fill out, you can mail in, and they will mail these to your house, and then you don't have to worry about picking one up here. They will mail these to your house. It's free of charge. Or you can go online to ourdailybread.org, ourdailybread.org, and you can sign up as well, and they will send these to your house. Again, my mom's been getting these for uh, probably about 20 years or so now. I think I told her about this years ago, and so she gets them at her house every three months. She also gets little special books they put out at like Easter and Christmas and other times like that. So uh, again, uh, be sure and uh, get one of those or send in for it as you would. Um, We'll be meeting this Saturday, uh, the, uh, what I call the advisory committee. It consists of uh, the um, heads of our committees, as well as other uh, staff members of the church, if you will, the treasurer, the elder, uh, custodian, and others. Uh, we will meet together to discuss uh, about reopening the church. That meeting will be this Saturday. And so as we begin to pray, I ask that you would pray again that we would seek the Lord's will about reopening, uh, how he wants us to do it. I already have some leading in that, uh, but we'll uh, again meet and make those decisions. Uh, we want to reopen, but we want to do so safely. Uh, and so you be in prayer about that. Pray uh, that God's will be done and that we will be able to begin meeting again before too long and let you know once those decisions have been made. So be in prayer about that. Also today, I ask that you'd be in prayer for our nation. Amen. Uh, uh, we all know the mess that is going on around, and um, uh, again, we uh, have no problem with protests. It's the rioters that the, is the problem, and we need to pray for peace, and that's the situation that started all this. Uh, that we need to be in prayer as well. We need to be in prayer for all those involved, and we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. Uh, be in prayer for those that are in charge, those rulers, from the president all the way down to the local mayors and city and uh, uh, county councils, as right. well as uh, police chiefs and sheriffs, that they uh, make right decisions. Um, and so we just need to pray about all of these things this morning. And as well as this COVID-19 situation. My wife just read to me that uh, there have been 3,000 cases in the last, what, two weeks? No, the last four days. The last four days. 3,000 cases in Georgia in the last four days. And uh, so it's a good chance that that is going to uh, continue to increase. So we need to be in prayer for that as well. So at this time, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, we first of all thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings of this day. In spite of everything that has gone on, this is a day that you have made and we can rejoice and be glad in it. And God, we do start out today lifting up our nation to you, Lord, lifting up our leaders, again, from the president down to the local leaders, God. Mm -hmm. We pray for the situation, for the unrest that is going on. We pray that our leaders would lead correctly and lead rightly and do the right things and say the right things and, and, and seek out your guidance and wisdom yes. before they make decisions, Lord God. We pray for uh, the situation that created these protests. It's not just this one incident, but there have been many incidents, Lord. Uh, not just involving the police, but involving ordinary people every day that are committing crimes. Yes. We often don't hear about those on the radio or the TV or the news because they're not as sensational. Mm. But Lord, all those situations we need to lift up to you. Yes. We need to be in prayer for these things. We need to be in prayer that those that are inciting these riots would calm down. And that the protests would be peaceful. Yes. 
that there would be peace in our nation, Lord, and that uh, all the junk that is happening, Lord God, that we would recognize it for what it is. Yes. And that your people would be about the business of praying. Yes. Help us in this, Lord God. Lord, we have many on our prayer list. Hmm. Lord, we have many situations, those that are in the hospital, in very serious condition, those that will be having surgery, those that are sick, Lord, those that maybe be having maybe having some domestic issue or some financial issue or some housing issue or some job issue, Lord. Yeah. Sickness. God on and on it goes, Lord. So much happening in our world today. God, we lift these situations up and ask that you would be in them, that you would move in them, Lord God. Yes. That you would strengthen your people. That you would help us stand strong in the things that we see going on today. Not just with the COVID disease, not just with the riots, but with all that is going on in the world. Yes. In our nation, in our lives, in our neighborhoods, God. We pray for that this morning. I ask that you would help us, Father, and strengthen us. Mm -hmm. Lord, I ask that you bless now the reading of your word and that you would open our hearts and minds to hear from you today, God, to receive the things that we need to receive from you, Lord, and that we would hide those in our hearts and we would share those things with others today and in the days to come. Again, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Touch us now in the precious name of Jesus. If you have your Bible this morning, you'll turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, and we'll begin reading in just a moment. John chapter 3, New Testament, Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. The Gospel of John chapter 3. The Gospel of John chapter 3 will begin in verse 18 and look at verses 18 through 21. John chapter 3 verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness yeah. rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. Yeah. But he that doeth truth come, cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. The title of my message today is It All Comes Down to Sin. It All Comes Down to Sin. Now, in the verses I just read, we don't see the word sin there, but we understand through what we've read that it is talking about sin. And I know many of you, maybe when you heard me say open to John chapter 3, the very first thing that popped into your mind was John 3, 16, because that is the verse that we so often hear. That is the verse that even people that aren't preachers are so familiar with. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And some may even go next to the verse 17 that says, God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so we know that when he came the first time, he came to die on the cross for our sins to offer salvation to the world. And yet so often we preach uh, the book of John, we preach the third chapter of John, and we stop at those two verses of Scripture because we like the feel good feeling that we get that Jesus died for us. And it is true and it's important. And it is good. It is the good news. It is the gospel that Jesus That's died right. for our sins. But we don't like the part that I read today. That's right. Because it says that he believeth on him uh, uh, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. We say that those that don't know Jesus Christ are condemned. Uh, they are already condemned. Uh, there is no need for them to be condemned later. We think, oh, when they stand at the great white throne judgment, when they stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be condemned. No, the Bible tells us that they are already condemned. Right. If you were listening to the sound of my voice this morning, before 
Lord Jesus Christ became your Lord and Savior, guess what? You were condemned. If you had Amen. died, you would have opened your eyes in hell. That's right. Because you were already condemned. But we don't like that part. We don't like to think about those who aren't saved already being condemned. And why are they condemned? Because the Bible says he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Bible tells us that there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that one day uh, at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Amen. those that don't believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, those that have not confessed him and have not been saved are condemned That's right. already. That's right. What is this condemnation in verse 19? That light is coming to the world. What is that light? That light is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. In chapter 1 of John, verse 9, it says, That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world, speaking of Jesus. The light has come into the world, and the Bible says, Men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Right. And so, in other words, they relish their evil. They revel in the evil, just like a pig wallowing in slop. They wallow in their evil, and they like their evil deeds better than they like the light of Jesus Christ. That's right. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. In other words, his deeds should be examined. His deeds should be judged. That's right. Again, what is this talking about? It is talking about sin. All that is going on in the world comes down to sin. That's right. Now, we have talked in the past about the fact that sin is missing the mark. But there is another aspect of sin that we want to talk about today. And yes, one of the definitions of sin is missing the mark. But the, another definition for sin is is rebellion. Sin is rebellion. It is True. rebellion against God. It's a rebellion against the things that he says and the things that he believes in and the things that he teaches us are the right things. And from Satan and the angels that fell to Adam and Eve to Cain and Abel up through all those that were killed in the flood no, up to our modern day all are in rebellion against God. That's right. They're in rebellion because they don't like what God says. They don't like Jesus Christ. They don't like the fact that he is the only way for salvation. And because of that, they are rebel against God. They've decided that they like the darkness rather than the light. And so they rebel against the one that has brought the light in the world in order to bring salvation. Amen. Not only do we see that in the Bible, but we see that in our modern times. Again, the Bible tells us that these things are going to only get worse in the last days. Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I've read this a lot lately, because we are seeing these events come to pass. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says this all know, know also that in the last days, what is coming? Perilous times. Right. Dangerous times are coming. Why? For men to be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, right. disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Now listen to this, verse 3, without natural affection. That's right. Truce breakers, false accusers. Listen to this next one. Incontinent, that means no self-control. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Right. In other words, you have people that have no self-control and they are fierce. In other words, they are brutal. That's uh, We have talked in the past uh, a few months about the fact that there is so much anger in the world today. Why? Because men are lovers of themselves. It's all about me and my faults, my thoughts and my wants and my needs. And if anybody else goes against what I believe, then I'm going to react with brutality and violence and fierceness. Why? Because I love myself more than I love anybody else or anything else, including God. And I want my way and I don't get my 
land going to be fierce. And the Bible tells us in the last days that these things would happen. Right. And so we see the violence. We see the anger. We see the brutality. That's right. We see people doing things because of uh, some mistake. People being shot at uh, fast food restaurants all because they forgot a packet of ketchup or, or they put pickle on a hamburger and the people get so mad that they come back and they attack them or they shoot them. All because of anger, all because of the prince of the power of this air right. has, has charged people today to incite them to a righteous Amen. living, which is what? Nothing but rebellion against God. That's right. We see it today as rebellion against authority, but ultimately as rebellion against God. And may right. I remind you that rebellion against authority is rebellion against God. Right. Uh, this conversation was had the other day. Let me read a passage of Scripture, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13 in verse 1. It says, let every soul be what? Subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. Right. The powers that be ordained are of God. Right. The powers that are appointed are appointed by God for good and for bad. God uses evil rulers, but he also uses good rulers. He does it all to accomplish his purpose, and he is going to accomplish his purpose. You say, well, I don't like the president, or I don't like the president that was before, the one before him, or this one. I don't like this congressman. Maybe I don't like my police chief or mayor or anybody that has authority over me. But guess what? God put that authority Amen. in power. And we respect it whether we like it or not. That's right. And we see the absence of that respect today. Amen. And it all comes down again to rebellion. That's right. And rebellion is sin. It yeah. all comes down to sin. It is increasing in the last days. That's right. And so we see all the things that are going on in the world over these last few days. And we have cries of police brutality. Are they justified in a lot of cases? Yes. Were they justified in the death of this man? Yes. We also hear the cries of racism. Or does that happen in our world? Yes. And, uh, and with all nationalities and all skin colors, Amen. there's racism. That's right. In various groups. That's right. Do we see the violence of the rioting that is going on and the destruction of property and the assault on people? Yes. Yep. But those are just names for sin. Amen. Again, it all comes down to sin. That's right. Sin against God. Let me ask you a question. When it comes to salvation, did Jesus just die for no. your race? No. Did Jesus just die for your nation? Or did he die for all? Well, let's go back to John 3.16. What does it say? For God so loved what? The world. Right. Not just one. It doesn't say he just so loved the United States that he died for the people of the United States. Or that he loved Asia so he only died for the people of Asia or Russia or any other nationality. Africa, it doesn't matter. That's right. No, it says, for God so loved the world. And you can look at any translation of the Bible and every single one says world. Amen. God died for all. That's right. Did you know that God died for, for the Lord Jesus Christ, died for that police officer that killed him? That's right. That's right. Did you know that Jesus died for all these rioters that are breaking windows and stealing things and setting police cars and buildings on fire? Jesus died for them just as much as he died for you. Amen. And yet we don't like to admit that. We don't like to say that. We don't want to think that maybe he died for somebody like that. And yet he died for you, didn't he? He died right. for your sin. Amen. Why is your sin that much better than those sins that we're seeing committed on the news today? Amen. I got news for you. They're not. That's 
right. Let me ask you another question. Have you prayed hmm. for that police officer? Right. Have you prayed for these people that are rioting? Not right. the ones protesting, we pray for them too, that are peaceful. Right. But those that are rioting, have you prayed for them? Hmm. Maybe you say, yeah, I pray that God would get them. Mm -mm -mm. You ever wonder if somebody prayed that about you? Amen. And what if God had answered that prayer, where would you be right now? That's right. Maybe in the pits of heaven? That's true. Have you prayed for their salvation? Right. You condemned them, but the Bible says they're already condemned. Amen. You say, but I'm angry at them. I would say, well, they're angry too. Hmm. You say, but my anger is righteous. Well, they, they think that their anger is righteous too. And I will tell you the truth. There's only one that has righteous anger. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. Because even my anger, and yes, I have reacted in anger. I have seen. Uh, I was angry about the police officer that killed that man for no reason. I was angry at seeing the protesters that patrol cars on fire and all the other things that have happened, rioting and looting that is going on from that group of protesters. And yet even my anger, though I may consider my anger righteous, is tainted with sin. Amen. Because I think my anger is the only right anger and everybody else's is wrong. Mm-mm-mm. And yet Jesus is the only one with righteous anger. That's right. And so are we praying for the salvation of these people? That's what we as Christians should be doing. Amen. Why? Because they are condemned. We've got to pray that they see the light. I was thinking about this morning. If you notice, when you have the protesters out protesting, uh, and other than those that are wearing masks because of this COVID-19, you don't see much of that with these protests. That's right. But with the rioters, even before COVID started, whenever you saw these groups rioting, what did you see? Most of them would wear masks. That's right. Why? Because the mask is a form of the darkness that they live in. That's right. They're trying to hide their faces, and they may hide it from others. They may hide it from law enforcement, but they haven't hid it from Jesus because Amen. he's the light of the world. And he sees through the mask. He sees through all that they're doing. He sees that they're lost and on their way to hell. Amen. And yet he still weeps and has a desire that they would be saved. Amen. Just as he had a desire that you would be saved before you came to Jesus. Amen. Because he died for them just as he died for us. Listen to Romans 5, 6 through 8. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God commendeth his own love or demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. He died for you in your sin, just as he died for these people in their sin. That's right. But they just can't see the light as you now see the light. That's right. And the light is the Lord Jesus Christ, who later on in the book of John says, I am the light of the world. Amen. Do the people that are rioting need to be arrested and prosecuted? Yes. Amen. But do we need to pray for their salvation? Yes. Amen. And is it hard to do? Yes. But that doesn't make it any less important that we do. Yes, sir. About these words again. The Lord has just really impressed this passage on me today. He that believeth on him is not condemned, and he believeth not is what? Again, condemned already. He is already condemned. These people are dying and on their way to hell. That's right. 
And we say, oh, well, they're just going to get what's coming to them. Hmm. Aren't you glad that God didn't give you what's coming to you? Amen. Because the Bible says all of us have sinned. All of us are deserving of hell. That's right. All of us had this passage that didn't apply to us before we were saved. That's right. We have been shown the light and we perceived it that these people still live in darkness. And our job is to pray that they would receive the light. Amen. Because the light is the life of men. Again, look back at chapter 1 of John, verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light. Let me go back to verse 5. And the light set, shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Hmm. Man said, for God's name was John, came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was said to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. We're to be light. Amen. Just as John the Baptist was light and came to bear witness of the light, why are you still on earth? To bear witness of the light that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And to pray for those that have not yet seen the light. Pray for those that are in rebellion. That's right. And yet why do we not do that? Because we ourselves are still tainted by sin. Hmm. There is that part of us that is still in rebellion against God. Mm -mm -mm. And we need to recognize it in ourselves first. That's right. And it's a tough pill to swallow. I've had strong reactions over the last few days. And I've had to go back and think about those things. And God said the same thing to me that I'm saying to you. Have you prayed for it? Right. Have you prayed for their salvation? You see, the government can pass more laws. They can set curfews. They can put out the National Guard or the military or the police. But at the end of the day, Jesus is the only one that's going to change things. Amen. Jesus is the only one that is going to make a difference in this world and the things that are going on in this world. That's right. We also need to understand that things like these are, become, are going to become commonplace in our world. Right. Again, the Bible tells us these things are going to happen. So does that mean we just throw our hands up and say, well, there's no use in praying because the Bible says it's going to happen. But no, we're to continue to pray. Amen. Because we don't know whether that one soul will be saved that was out doing these things. Amen. I also had a thought that hit me too. I wonder how many people are out there writing and doing all these things that are sitting in a church today. Oh, right. Or that are watching a church service that would call themselves Christians and think that they did something righteous mm -mm -mm. by going and causing the destruction they caused. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You see, we are all tainted with sin. Amen. Yes, my sin has been washed away. Yes, the Lord has given me new clothes, and yet how often do we want to go out and pick up those dirty clothes and put them back on again? That's right. Because they're comfortable. Mm. We like comfortable clothes. People say, I don't like wearing ties. Well, I don't particularly like wearing one either because it's not comfortable. Mm. But I just feel it's something that I should do. That's right. Our sinful clothes are comfortable clothes. Mm. Our righteous clothes are often uncomfortable. Why? Because that light that we want to shine down in the lives of people that do these things are also shining down on us. That's right. And oh, we love to have other people's sins revealed, but we don't like how and how we're shown too much, do we? Amen. And yet that light shines down on us just as it shines down on everybody else. 
so often to even those that we call ourselves Christians mm. would rather step off into the darkness That's right. instead of the light that causes us to recognize the sin in our own lives. Amen. We don't like it. I would say again, when a surgeon operates and cuts out something diseased out of the body, it's painful and it hurts and we don't like it. And yes, it's necessary. That's right. And the light of the Lord Jesus Christ shines into our souls to reveal sin. Why? So that we can do what? Confess. Amen. Repent. And step into the light. For verse 21 says that he that doeth truth may come into the light that his deeds may be made manifest so they are wrought in God. In other words, my deeds need to be godly. Amen. And they need to reflect the light of the Lord Jesus Christ that is supposed to be shining in my life. You think this is a comfortable message to be preaching today now? Because you know who this message is for more than anybody else is for me. Mm. But we have to be about the Lord's business. That's right. Remember, these people, what are they doing? They are doing what sinners do. That's right. Why should we expect them to act any different? Now, I'm a city boy, but I've been out of the country before when I was a kid, and I had an uncle who uh, was married into the family, and, and uh, his father raised pigs, and I remember going out and watching them slop the pigs. And I remember going out to the, or, or the, the pen where the pigs were at, and can I tell you, of all the times I went out and watched them slop them pigs, not one time did I see one say, hang on a second, and went and washed his hooves. <laughs> got dressed up mm -mm -mm. and walked up to the pig trough. That's right. And then, no. He acted like a pig. That's right. He went up there and wallowed all in that swamp and then rolled around in it and the mud and all the goop and everything else. Why? Because that's what a pig does. That's right. Just like sinners sin. They commit adultery. They commit abortion. They commit acts of homosexuality. They commit acts of fornication, which again is sex outside of marriage. They commit acts of adultery. They dress up in the opposite of gender's clothing. That's right. They do all these things, and we're shocked. But sinners are just acting like sinners. That's right. Because they live in condemnation. Mm. And so, yes, we rebuke the sin. Yes, we need to see justice. But yes, we need to pray that they would be saved, that they would step into the light. Amen. And be cleansed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read one other passage of Scripture and I'll close. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 47. This is in the red lamp. The words of the Lord Jesus himself. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Hmm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Read that again. Right. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's right. That ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. Hmm. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. That's right. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so. In other words, you need to love those, even those that hate you. Amen. Even, let me say this, those that you may hate. Amen. 
those that make you angry. That's right. How can we get over our righteous anger? We need to pray for them. Amen. Pray for their salvation. Pray that their eyes will be open. open. Pray that their hearts will be touched and would be changed. That's right. And that they would step into the light that is coming to the world. Can we do that today? Can I tell you one of the biggest problems in America today? And again, it's not the government. It's not racism. It's not violence. It's because God's people are not about God's business. Amen. And because God's people. Let me tell you, I've been reading some books on prayer lately. And they hurt my feelings. One of them's a thick book. I'm still reading it. But it's hurting my feelings every day. But one writer, and I'll just paraphrase, basically he said, when we as Christians aren't going to the Lord in prayer, basically we're thumbing our nose at God, telling him we don't need his help. Mm -mm -mm. We can do it on our own. Mm. Wait a minute, what's that called again? Mm. Oh, rebel. Amen. And what is rebellion? Sin. That's right. No different than Satan, no different than Adam and Eve or Cain and Abel or all the junk that's going on today. Amen. So God's people need to get busy praying. And then having the opportunity to live as Christians. That's right. To show ourselves as Christians. And have Christian attitudes even when we are angry. That's right. If we do that, church, Christians, maybe we can slow this end time progression a little bit. Right. I don't know. God does. Amen. But we won't know if we don't at least try. Try. So can we do that today? The light is coming to the world. As I've said, we are little pinpoints of light, or we're supposed to be. Hmm. We are to reflect that light of Jesus Christ so that it shines throughout the world. Amen. How bright is your life today? Hmm. And what are you going to do about it? Let's pray. Father, again, we're grateful for this day. We thank you so much for your blessing. Lord, we live in difficult times, and this is a difficult message. Probably stepped on toes and hurt feelings. Start with my God. But Lord, you want your people to open our, their eyes hmm. and to do what you called us to do. To react differently than the rest of the world reacts. Yes. To pray hmm. and to be light in this dark world. God, we need to do a better job of that. Hmm. There could be another revival if all your people would cast off our rebellion mm. and be about your business. Yes. God, help us today. Strengthen us in our walk today. And again, touch our nation as we are going to global doing. Mm.